Uh, but here's what John Taylor, Senator John Taylor of, of Virginia, said about what was going on at the time. He said, what was being proposed was a national government nearly conforming to that of England. By Colonel Hamilton's project, the states were fairly and openly to be restored to the rank of provinces and to be made as, in, as dependent upon a supreme national government as they had been upon a supreme British government. And so the Jeffersonians were saying, wait a minute, we just fought a revolution against this system. Why would we want this? And of course, the reason why they wanted it is uh, the same reason why the King of England wanted it. He enriched himself and his friends with it at the expense of everybody else, but it was a way to enrich the politically connected and the elite uh, you know, uh, uh, who supported the government. And of course, uh, when, when Hamilton and his uh, cronies did not get their way, Hamilton himself uh, denounced the Constitution as a frail and worthless fabric. Here's a, another thing that uh, John Taylor noted in his book. He said, uh, the convention attendees viewed the Constitution as a compact among the free and independent states and not the creation of a national government. It was proposed and seconded to erase the word national, so somebody did propose this, and substitute the words United States in the plural uh, in the fourth resolution which passed in the affirmative. Thus, we see an opinion expressed at the Constitutional Convention that the phrase, quote, United States, did not mean a consolidated American people or nation, and all the inferences in favor of a national government are overthrown. In all the founding documents, by the way, the, the words United States are always in the plural, meaning the free, independent, and sovereign states are united in creating a, a compact or a confederacy to achieve certain ends. It, there was no such idea of something called the United States government, the, the monolithic leviathan that exists in Washington, D.C. today. Uh, so Taylor uh, also, uh, as I said, smoked these people out in terms of their economic agenda. He said their intent was to create, and I'm quoting again, quote, monarchy and its handmaiden consolidation and its other handmaiden ambition and a national government dressed up in popular guises such as national splendor and national strength. Uh, uh, now, Taylor also knew, he understood, and that wasn't just John Taylor, it was all the Jeffersonians. They understood that this push for a monopoly government where all power is centered in the nation's capital was always tied to the economic agenda. And the economic agenda is sort of an example of early day Krugmanisms. Uh, in other words, it, sound, it was convoluted, ass backwards economics of the sort that you would read in a typical Paul Krugman New York Times column. Here's, here's what John Taylor wrote in 1823 about what these people were up to. Here, he's saying, he's mocking their economic arguments. He's saying, here's what they're saying. They're saying this, quote, I'm quoting John Taylor, the greater the government revenue, the richer are the people. So the more they tax you, the richer you are. So that frugality in the government is an evil thing. But in the people, it's a good thing. So get, the more of your money you give the government, and the more you let the government spend, that's a good thing. <laughs> that monopolies and exclusive privileges promote the general welfare. And you have to understand that uh, the battle over the Constitution at the time was between the Jefferson... Who, who saw the document as something that would bind government in chains. His famous phrase was, government needs to be bound by the chains of the Constitution. The Hamiltonians, totally the opposite. They saw this document as if it was properly interpreted by clever lawyers like themselves as a potential rubber stamp on anything the government would ever do. As long as you could get enough government judges on the Supreme Court who are like-minded, to go along with rubber stamping everything, then it could be a useful document. And uh, one, of the historian, one of the historians of Hamilton, a biographer of Hamilton, uh, said this of him. He said, it seems certain that Hamilton, had he had his way, would have affixed a certain certificate of constitutionality to every last tax. Hamilton took a large view of the power of Congress to tax because he took a large view of the power to spend. And, uh